for the oral gallbladder series. So that means we're going to be taking something in the mouth in order to look at the gallbladder with x-ray. I got a big alert here, iodine allergies. So, because we're going to use an iodine substance, so we have to make sure there's no iodine uh, for this patient. We are going to identify stones in the gallbladder or the common bile duct in tumors. We're going to test the gallbladder storage and emptying function. The night before this test, they are going to have a fat-free meal. So we can't, they can't have a cheeseburger with lots of fat, so they need to have something with uh, no fat in it whatsoever. So we'll have to read uh, nutritional labels or whatever, so no fat, because we're going to use fat, a fatty substance, for the test, and we don't want to alter the test. So no fat. Um, they're going to take six iodine tablets, one every five minutes with a glass of water, and then they'll become NPO after they get all their tablets down. That's why we ask if they're allergic to iodines or taking the iodine tablets. The iodine is going to go uh, into the body. It's going to be absorbed, and we can see their vessels on x-ray. So when they come in the next morning, we're going to give them this lovely fatty liquid meal. We're going to say drink up because it's gross. They're going to drink it and it will stimulate the gallbladder. Remember when I said that whenever we eat and the food goes down into the duodenum and it sends signals to the gallbladder and the pancreas that hey we need digestive enzymes now and it'll squeeze out digestive enzymes. So this time we're going to see if the gallbladder is squeezing out bile to break down the fat. So the fatty meal will stimulate the gallbladder. They'll take x-rays to see how the gallbladder is doing. Then they'll follow the physician's orders. So this test does not use barium. It uses iodine. So make sure that this test is done first. So there's a lot of ordering of tests with the GI series. So which test would you pick out of this list to get done ordered first? You would pick the gallbladder series because it does not have barium. Okay, so I'm going to try and draw on here the duct system so that you'll better understand the next couple procedures. So we have our liver. Okay, we have our gallbladder okay then over here we have our pancreas okay then we have some ducts so we have the liver has a duct here the gallbladder has a duct the pancreas has a duct pancreatic duct okay and they all come down like this into one duct Okay, so this one is the common bile duct. It's not CBD oil, it's common bile duct. Um, this one is the bile duct. We have the hepatic duct, and then we have the pancreatic duct. Okay, so this is the gallbladder, and it holds 60 mLs of bile. And we have our, li our liver, makes one liter a day of bile. Okay, we have our pancreatic enzymes. Okay, and everything goes this way, right? Goes down. So it all goes down to the common bile duct. So down here at the bottom, common bile duct goes into the duodenum. So that's the first part of the small bowel. Okay, so the duodenum comes from the stomachs. So we have our esophagus. We have our stomach. We have our pyloric sphincter right here. And we'll have the duodenum. So this part is the duodenum. And then all of these enzymes dump into here. So when we get our food, food comes in. It sends signals to these organs 
and they produce enzymes that come out into the duodenum to help break down fats and carbs and proteins. So I hope that this um, will help you with the anatomy. I know it's messy, but here in the bile duct, sometimes you can have stones that built up and they can travel and they can get stuck here in the ducts. Bowel can go backwards, it can back up, and it can go back up into the pancreas and make the pa pancreas go a little cray cray. And the pancreas uh, can develop pancreatitis if it's severe enough. It can also cause some hepatitis too, just inflammation, not the disease, um, if it goes up into there. Um, but so you can also have tumors that grow. You can also have scarring that makes um, this place narrow and makes back blockage back up. So the next one is the cholan cholangiography. And with the cholangiography, you'll have a scope that goes in the person's mouth. I'll put it in, this is the mouth. So the scope will go in the mouth down the esophagus. <clears throat> down the stomach, then into the small bowel. And the scope actually is special, and it can curve and go up into this bowel duct, make a balloon, and then pull things out. And then they'll just pull it right back out. So that's a part of it. They'll inject the dye, then they'll take x-rays, inject dye, take x-rays, the dye part and then x-ray part, that's called a cholangiogram. So they're gonna take an x-ray and then they can see if they're ducts or uh, bile, um, bile stones or something in there, gallstones, and they'll take the balloon and then they'll uh, pull them out. So let's look at the next slide. So the cholangiography is what I just showed you. And that specific test is called ERCP, um, electroretrograde cholangiopancreatography. You already say that five times fast. Um, so that's where you take the scope, the EGD scope, and you and you go all the way up in there, pull them out, pull out stones or whatever, inject dye. So the the word cholangiography just means they're going to inject some. Um, they're just going to. Uh, inject some dye, take some pictures, uh, so make sure they're not allergic to iodine. Afterwards, they just need to drink a lot of fluids and maybe sedated, so they, they will need post-sedation precautions. So a client is scheduled for a barium enema. Which of the following statements indicates that the client understands the pre-procedure instructions? So what instructions are you going to give them beforehand? So go ahead and be thinking about that. Number one, I can eat whatever I want before the test. I can only have clear liquids the day before the test. I cannot eat any spicy foods for seven days before the enema. I have to abstain from all food and fluids for 24 hours before the test. So the correct answer is number two, I can only have clear liquids the day before the test. So as preparation for the bare minimum, the client must restrict intake to clear fluids the day before the test. A low residue diet is recommended for two days before the test. So clients must ref refrain from high fiber and spicy foods. Then reframing from fluids occurs after midnight the day before the procedure. 